On July 24th of 2020, 18-year-old Gia Fuda was traveling far from her home in Maple Valley, Washington, without telling her parents where she was going. She headed east along Highway 2 through the Cascade Mountains near Stevens Pass, when her vehicle apparently ran out of gas. At this point, she left her car, taking her phone, a Bible, and her journal. Strangely, she left her purse behind in the car. Her parents quickly became alarmed when she stopped answering calls and texts and reported her missing to authorities who immediately started searching for her. The next day her vehicle was found abandoned by Department of Transportation workers with no sign of where she went. Her phone could not be tracked either because it was dead or because of poor reception in the mountain range. At first there was nothing too strange about this disappearance though I still followed it closely in the news because this particular area has had many odd missing persons cases in the past. At the time, it seemed as though foul play may have somehow had a hand in her disappearance, as authorities had labeled it as, quote, suspicious. Images showing Gia at a coffee shop prior to her disappearance were released to the media. After eight days of searching, there was absolutely no sign of what had happened to Gia. On the very last day of the search, however, a team was searching off of Highway 2 along Scenic Creek when they began finding a trail of items that belonged to Gia. These included a notebook, her shoes and socks, a jacket, backpack, Bible, and even her cell phone. The cell phone was likely completely useless in the mountainous area, but it would still be worth holding on to. And why she shed so much clothing is unknown. It was very hot in Washington during this time, but it doesn't make sense to completely abandon a jacket when it will only get cold once night arrives. It makes even less sense to take off shoes and socks and be walking along a steep ravine barefoot. This was the first bit of information that fit with the details of many other strange disappearances. Clothing, particularly shoes, often seem to be shed from the missing, involved in strange disappearances and for unknown reasons. The rescue team followed this trail of clothing up a very steep hill, and eventually found Gia sitting on a rock in a deep ravine. The rescuers said that when they first found her she had very little clothing on, and was not coherent enough to explain what had happened to her or where she had been, merely repeating, I don't know where I am. Gia was immediately taken to the hospital and reunited with her family. Doctors say that other than dehydration and some cuts and bruises, she was completely unharmed. Police called the recovery a miracle, saying that Gia survived by drinking water from the creek and eating some of the berries in the area. They also said that in the coming days they will question Gia about what happened to her. It will be interesting to see if her answers are ever further reported on in the news. It is unknown why she would have left the safety of her car and wandered into the woods, but this sort of disorientation is all too common in other cases of strange disappearances. When her family told her that she had been missing for nine days, Gia apparently expressed more confusion, believing that she had only been gone for three. This is yet another factor that seems common among missing people. The family and authorities attribute this to stress and dehydration. However, that feels a bit implausible. It is interesting how she was apparently suffering dehydration while being found next to a creek with water. And regardless of how stressed or dehydrated she may have been, it does seem to be a bit of a stretch to say that she confused nine hot days and nine cold nights as being only three. You would think that given that she had to endure each day and night cycle alone trying to stay alive in the forest that she would be able to have some semblance of the amount of time that she was lost. But she apparently experienced nearly a week of missing time. What happened to her during this time is completely unknown.
but to simply write off a week's worth of time and memory to being distraught and dehydrated seems like a cop-out. Too much about this case doesn't make sense as it is. Why wander so far into the woods instead of staying near the road or in her car? Why shed clothes and shoes? It is also interesting to point out that Gia's car was found at Scenic Falls. That's about 1.2 miles away from where she was eventually found at Scenic Creek. Many search and rescue teams had been searching this area for over a week and had only stumbled upon her on the last day of the search. That is a miracle. If she had not been found that day, it is likely that she never would have been. It's unlikely she would have done much more walking without any shoes. But where was she for the eight days of searching? It is possible she had been wandering aimlessly throughout the woods, but it is still astonishing that she could be found alive on the very last day of the search, only a little over a mile away from the car that she had walked away from. It's wonderful she was found alive and I'm happy for her and her family. But I do hope the authorities question her some more, and perhaps more answers can be gleaned on what outwardly appears to be a very weird case. Until next time, thanks for watching.